Hi, photography friends. How are you doing? I hope you're well. I hope you are in a good mood. Today, we're going to take a look at a new lens from Sigma for the Fujifilm X mount. The Sigma 10 18mm f2.8 DCDN. If you are interested in this lens, which is said to be the most compact ultra wide angle with f2.8 aperture for APS C cameras, as of October 2023, when it was first released, here we go. I've said in previous Sigma lens reviews that Sigma lenses have always excited me. The reason is simple. It produces quality, usable, and more affordable lenses. Sigma is a company that has been operating in the production of photographic equipment since the 1960s. They manufacture their products in Japan. It is a brand that has proven itself with its products, optics, and photo video quality. That's why I'm happy that Sigma is releasing X-mount lenses and that I'm reviewing them and sharing them with you. Let's see if my expectations will be met at the end of the review. In the meantime, I would like to thank Sigma Turkey distributor PhotoPro for sending us this lens and giving us the opportunity to make an honest review it. Previous Fujifilm X-mount lenses were X-mount adaptations of Sigma's earlier Sony E and Leica L-mount lenses. However, this lens is a new lens from Sigma, and the tradition is intact, so there are Sony E-mount and Leica L-mount versions of the lens, as well as Fujifilm X-mount. Another feature of this lens is that it is the wide-angle complement to the Sigma 18-50mm f2.8, which we also reviewed. If you have both lenses, you will have a range starting from 10mm and going up to 50mm with a fixed aperture of f2.8. Of course, at this point, it is not hard to guess that the next lens for this series will be a zoom lens starting from 50mm and going towards tele. Thus, the whole range will be closed. Let's wait and see. Let's go back to the lens in hand. Sigma has included this lens, which is the continuation of the series, in the contemporary lenses category. With this category, Sigma states that it uses high technology to improve optical performance in a compact structure, producing modern lenses that meet a wide range of needs. There are two rings on the lens. The one closer to the camera and relatively narrower is the manual focus ring. It has a very smooth rotation. The second ring, closer to the end of the lens, is the zoom ring. Focal lengths from 10mm to 18mm are marked on the ring. Right in that area and also in the front, we see the label of the lens. On the label, we see that it contains the DCDN code, where the DC code tells us that these lenses are made for APS-C cameras. If it was produced for full-frame cameras, this code would be DG. DN code for superior performance in mirrorless cameras with short flange back distance, that means it is being produced. When I hold the lens in my hand, it feels light but sturdy and of high quality. To keep the lens as light as possible, Sigma has made the body from carefully selected composite materials. Some of the internal structure is made of metal to ensure that the lens can withstand frequent and intensive use. Maybe I say this in almost every third-party lens review, but as a Fujifilm user, I looked for an aperture ring on this lens, but unfortunately there is none. Of course, this is not a defect, it's a choice. And I'm sure there are users who like this choice, who like to adjust the aperture by turning the wheel on the camera. But I'm not in that group. My habits make me wish there was an aperture ring, but there's nothing to do. The physical dimensions of the lens for X mount are 72.2 mil diameter, and 64.3 mil height. It has a weight of 250 grams. The filter diameter is 67 mil. These physical dimensions are also valid for Sony E mount and Leica L mount with minor differences. The angle of view of the lens, which corresponds to its full frame counterpart, 15 to 27 mil, is 109.7 degrees at the widest position. At the narrowest angle, it is 76.5 degrees. The aperture range runs from f2.8 to f22. 
the minimum focusing distance is 11.6 centimeters in the wide angle position and 19.1 centimeters in the narrow angle position. The compactness of the lens means it's always portable for photographers and a minimal system on a gimbal for videographers. Out of the box comes the front and back cover and a new type of lens hood with wings. When we overlap the white line on this new type lens, hood with the white line on the lens, and push the lens hood, it is attached without the need to turn it too much. To remove it, we turn it slightly to the right and it comes out. It is a practical connection, but it is necessary to follow whether it will come off and fall off while in the bag or on the shoulder. Inside the Sigma 10 to 18 mm lens barrel are 13 lenses in 10 groups, four of which are Asperic, one SLD, and the other three FLD. It also contains seven rounded aperture blades. The lens is protected against lens flare by a multi-layer coating. Again against dust particles and water drops, the mount area is protected by a rubber gasket. To do our autofocus tests, as is now customary, we place Uncle Pala at the minimum focusing distance of the lens and Pakize further away. Moving back and forth between the two, we do our autofocus tests at both ends of the lens, 10 mil and 18 mil focal lengths for both stills and video. In photo mode at 10 mil and 18 mil, the lens autofocus motor is extremely fast and delivers a stable, reliable focus. When we do a similar test in video mode, we observe a relatively slower autofocus at 10 mil. When I move back and forth between focusing points, there is sometimes, but not always, some breathing from time to time. Let's see how it is at the 18 mil end. I observe a similar performance with occasional breathing and relatively slow autofocus speed, especially when focusing at a distance. In the face eye tracking tests, we see that the face eye tracking system captures the eye for the most part, both at the 10 mm ultra wide angle end and in 18 mm wide angle mode. With a smoother motion that is not so random, tracking is likely to be much more successful. Autofocus tests reveal a fast and stable autofocus performance in photo mode. In video mode, the speed drops a bit and there is some breathing from time to time. However, I would say it's less than we've seen in many of the lens tests we've done on this channel. As always, I took a photo at F8 aperture at the 10mm end of the lens for reference. Let's take a look at this photo first. The photo looks quite sharp in general view. When we approach the center at 100%, we see that the center sharpness is impressive. On the spine of the book, please look at the texture in this area. It's extremely sharp and the contrast is just right. Now let's go towards the corner. In the corners, we observe that the sharpness and contrast are a bit lacking. Then let's take the same photo with f2.8 at the 10 mil end and compare the centers. When we look at it, we see that the center sharpness is equivalent in both and is razor sharp. When we go towards the corners, we do not observe any significant change between the photo taken with f8 and the photo taken with f2.8. In other words, the lens gives a performance equivalent to f8 at 10 mil focal length, f2.8 in the center and corners. Let's see if we can say the same for the smallest aperture, f22. When I compare the centers, I can see the loss of sharpness more easily, especially on the spine of this book. I observe the same loss in the corners. So at which aperture can I compensate for this loss? To see this, I examine the photos by opening the aperture one stop. When I finally get to f11, I see that the sharpness is equivalent to f8. As a result, it is possible to take very sharp photos between f2.8 f11 at the 10 mil ultra wide angle end of the Sigma 10 to 18 mil lens. The centers of these photos will be razor sharp with very little loss of sharpness in the corners. Now let's come to the focal length of 18 mil. I'm running a similar process for this focal length. 
First, I'm going to look at the photo I took at F8 because this photo will be our reference. In the center, again, there is a sharpness where I can easily see even the texture of the book. Let's see, what about the corners? Unfortunately, the situation in the corners is not as ambitious. I hope you can see the loss of sharpness and the loss of focus on the screen. Now let's check the f2.8 aperture and compare it with the photo taken at f8. In the center, the sharpness is almost the same and quite good. Let's look at the corners. In the corners, there is, again, a loss of sharpness and defocusing compared to f8. Let's examine the situation for the smallest aperture, f22. The loss of sharpness in the center is easily observed. When we drop one stop to f16, we regain the loss of sharpness in the center and become equivalent to f8. Now let's come back to f22 and look at the corners. Surprisingly, we observe that the corners are sharper at this aperture than at f8. In conclusion, if we take the 18 mile focal length as a reference, I would say that the center sharpness is great between f2.8, f16, while the corners are sharper between f11, f22. As someone who has been using the Fujifilm 10 24mm f4 ultra wide angle lens for years, I can confidently say that the Sigma 10 18mm is just as sharp. Sometimes at open apertures in the border areas where contrast is high, we see a purple or green blend at the boundary between the bright light coming from behind and the dark area in front. We call this blending chromatic aberrations. It occurs because the light refracted by the lenses in the lens cannot be collected in a certain center. Although lens manufacturers minimize this with both optical solutions and coating methods, they cannot completely eliminate this optical phenomenon. I am at the 10 mil end of the lens, and when I check, look, normally in another lens, we can observe chromatic aberrations in these areas. However, I did not see color fringing even at 400% magnification, let alone 100%. When I did a similar check for the 18 mil tip, I still don't see color fringing. I found the lens very, very successful in this sense. We have an ultra-wide angle lens. Naturally, we expect the lens to show geometric distortions. Right now, we see on the screen the automatic elimination of the corrections by applying the lens profile. As it is, the horizontals and verticals at the 10 mm end look pretty good. When we look at what would have happened if the lens profile had not been applied, we see that the lens has a barrel-shaped geometric distortion. For the 18 mm tip, again, the lens profile has done a good job and the horizontals verticals are perpendicular to each other. However, if we turn off the profile correction, we see that this time it is not a barrel type distortion, but a compression type geometric distortion. Fortunately, there is a lens profile and it automatically eliminates these geometric distortions. To observe the vignetting in the lens, I took a photo from my balcony at both the 10mm end and the 18mm end. Let's look at the photo at the 10mm end first. When we deactivate the lens profile, we can easily see both the barrel distortion and the vignetting effect in the corners. Let's take a look at the 18mm end. Similarly, when we remove the lens profile, we can observe the concave distortion and the vignetting effect at the corners. Once again, we confirm that the lens profile does a good job. The widest aperture of our lens is f2.8. When we take photos and videos at this value, we are faced with a bokeh effect that we are not used to at wide angle. This bokeh effect can help us capture creative shots and videos. Again, we can observe that the lights in the background give a nice bokeh in the round shape. When you turn the lenses directly into a light source, an effect called lens flare occurs. Although it is rarely used for aesthetic reasons, 
In many cases, it is desirable to minimize this effect as much as possible. Lens manufacturers therefore try to minimize this effect with coatings and optical solutions. At the 10mm end of the Sigma 10 18mm f2.8 lens, as you can see on the screen right now, there is almost no lens flare. At the 18mm end of the lens, again, there is an amount of lens flare that we can consider to be quite small. On the other hand, at the smallest aperture, you can see the light star formed by the light source on the screen now, both at 10mm focal length and at 18mm focal length. It is time to summarize our findings. First, let's take a look at the lens pros. Now there is some cons. Photographers who love ultra-wide angle, who feel comfortable in the 10 to 18 mil focal range, landscape photographers, indoor photographers, those who like to work on location portraits, architectural photographers, street photographers who like to produce different works, this lens appeals to you. The fact that it is small in size and extremely light is a big plus. The fact that the photo and video quality is very good is its strength. Although the focal range is a bit different with these features, it is a very serious competitor for Fujifilm 10 to 24 mil. To tell you the truth, I was positively impressed with this lens and I recommend it to all my friends who are looking for an ultra wide angle to give it a try. It was another long and detailed video. I hope that the effort we have put in has been useful to you. If you think so, I ask you to support our channel. Until we meet again in the next video, goodbye.